In Ukraine, President Zelensky says Russia is maximizing the risk of nuclear disaster in the south, where Europe's largest nuclear power plant has come under shelling in recent days. The U.N. Secretary General says he is gravely concerned about possible catastrophic consequences. And today, the State Department says the U.S. supports calls for a demilitarized zone around that nuclear plant. Joining us now is Kurt Volker. He is the former U.S. ambassador to NATO. He was also a U.S. special representative for Ukraine negotiations. Ambassador, you just returned from a trip to Ukraine. Let's just start with what's your assessment of the situation there right now? Uh, well, first off, uh, the war is far from over. There's a long way to go. The Ukrainians have fought back. They've protected Kyiv in the West, but there's a lot of fighting that will still happen. Second, the, the Ukrainians have incredible resilience and determination uh, to take their territory back. Uh, the Russian assault has been fairly brutal, but they are very determined to fight back. The Russians seem to have exhausted themselves. They're not really able to advance and take much more territory right now. And the Ukrainians are using that to try to go on their own offensive to take some territory back, particularly in the south around Kherson. And that's why we saw some of those attacks in Crimea overnight to weaken the supplies to those forces there. The potential threat of the shelling that we're reporting around the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant can't be overstated here, right? President Zelensky says Russia is turning this nuclear plant into a battlefield. Your reaction and what do you think needs to happen? Yeah. Right. Well, first off, it's incredibly reckless what the Russians are doing. Um, they have not only taken over the plant, they've harassed the crews there, they've not allowed normal operations. And then they have stored ammunition there, they've placed their heavy equipment there, they are firing on civilian areas from there, trying to encourage the Ukrainians to fire so that they can blame them. Uh, the Ukrainians are not doing that, they are making every effort to avoid any catastrophe at the plant. Uh, what the Ukrainians will try to do is surround the forces that are there so that they are forced to surrender. Uh, but that is a, a very risky proposition in itself, uh, as the Russians have all that uh, armament and ammunitions and so forth stored at the plant. I want to ask you about the seven Russian warplanes that were destroyed in Crimea this week. CNN found this could be Moscow's biggest loss of military aircraft in a single day since World War II. What do you see as the impact of that? Well, Russia has a lot of aircraft, so seven is not going to significantly damage their number of aircraft available. What it does show, however, is that the Ukrainians have the means to attack Russian forces further away from the front lines. This is very important. Uh, partly this is the high Mars that the U.S. has given them, which have a range out to 80 kilometers. Partly it's Ukrainian special forces. Uh, but it shows what the Ukrainians can do with longer range uh, systems, and they desperately need even longer range, which we have thus far not provided, but they would put to good use if so. It also seems like Russia may be lacking in numbers on the battlefield because CNN's reporting that Russia is offering freedom to prisoners in Russia if they join this fight. And I'm going to quote here, they will accept murderers but not rapists, pedophiles, extremists, or terrorists, apparently, according to a prisoner who spoke to CNN. Your reaction to this? It's a pretty desperate measure. Uh, Putin has depleted about half of his conventional military capabilities, uh, according to British and American sources. And that means that the only way they can replenish the fighting force they need is either a general mobilization, which Putin does not want to do because it would alienate the population, or extreme measures such as this. And even if they do succeed in recruiting prisoners or others into the armed forces, this does not mean they're trained, does not mean they're capable, does not mean they're motivated to fight. So they really are in a very difficult position. Meanwhile, the Ukrainians, highly motivated, well-trained, a lot more of them in terms of personnel, and they're getting much better U.S. and other Western equipment now. Quickly, I only have about 30 seconds, but I want to ask you about something close to home. Let's talk about a potential prisoner swap with the U.S. Russia this morning confirming negotiations are happening. Where do you think this is headed, and how soon could people like Brittany Griner or Paul Whelan come home? Well, as much as we'd all like to see Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan come home, I am pretty convinced that Putin plans to drag this out as long as possible. He, he's enjoying the game. He's enjoying the political pressure that this is putting on President Biden. And I think he just wants to drag it out and make it continue. That's unfortunate. I hope you're wrong in this case. Ambassador Kurt Volker, thank you so much. I always appreciate your insights and expertise. Thanks for being thank here. You.